triads are three note chords. And understanding how to form triads is an essential skill because they form the foundations of all the more complex chord types. So understanding the materials we present you on this lesson, which covers just six basic chord shapes, will put you in a very good place to be able to understand the many more complex chords that you will encounter at the advanced levels of guitar playing and in particular if you're learning jazz guitar. So let's start by looking at a C major chord. So that's our C major chord and let's work out what actual notes we're playing when we play this chord. We're strumming all six strings here. So on the bottom string that's just open so that's an E note. On the next string we're holding it down at the third fret so that's A, A sharp, B, C. That's a C, or E, C. The next string we're holding it down at the second fret so that's D, D sharp, E again, another E note. E, C, E. Next we've got an open G. So we've got E, C, E, G. And then we've got on the second string, held down at the first fret, B, C. So that's a, a, another C note. And then of course we've got another open E at the top. So when I strum that, although I'm actually strumming six strings, it's only giving me three different notes. C, E and G. If we analyse these notes against the major scale based on the root note of the chord, in this case C, we see that the notes of the chord are notes 1, 3 and 5 on the major scale. From this we can derive a useful formula that will enable us to work out the notes of any other major chord. The major chord formula is simply expressed as 1, 3, 5. In standard notation a major triad might look like this. The notes are piled up on top of each other because by definition a chord is three or more notes heard simultaneously. So now we know the major triad formula, let's see how we can apply it. For example, we'll take the key of A major. The key of A major has three sharps. Father, Charles, goes. Remember we stop at note 7, so G is note 7 in the key of A. So we've got three sharps, Father, Charles, goes, F, C and G. Selecting notes according to the major triad formula, we get note 1, A, note 3, C sharp and note 5, E. So the triad looks like this. Now to find these notes on the fretboard. So supposing I want to create from first principles um, a chord shape for A major up this end of the fretboard. I would think like this. I would start by playing my sixth string, ask myself what note is that? It's an E. Is that note one of the three that I need in this triad? Well actually it is. So I can just leave that open. Now I play the next string. What note is that? It's an A, open A. That again, that is included in our triad of A, C sharp and E. So we needn't put any fingering on that. We just leave that open. Next string, D. Now that note isn't in our triad. So I move up the D string, D, D sharp, until I come to a note that is in our triad, E. That's the fifth note in the scale of A. So that is in our triad. So I'm going to keep a finger there. Then I look at our next string, G. Is that in the triad? No. So G sharp, A. I move that finger there because A is one of the three notes we want. Then I play the next string, B. B, 
isn't in our triad, nor is C, but C sharp is. So I'll put that finger there. Then I play this string, that's an E, which again is in our triad. So that's how I've created my A shape. Sounds like an A chord and I expect we're all familiar with that particular fingering as an A chord anyway. But this time we worked it out from basic principles. We could almost as easily have applied the same uh, idea, the same principle, same formula to working out other voicings of A major elsewhere on the fretboard. For example, supposing I start here at the fifth fret. Well, that note is an A because that's the note we tune the A string to, so that's good. On the next string, We've got a D, well that's no good, uh, D sharp, E, we could put that note in there, so A, E, on the next string that's a G, G sharp, A, so we'll take that up to there, on the next string that's a C, uh, that's no good, C sharp, that is good, that's in our triad, so that's A, E, A, C sharp, that note's already an E, so we don't, we can keep our finger there, and that note's already an A. So now I can hold that one, that one, and that one down with my bar, and I can put that one on the C sharp note there, that one on the E there, that one on the A there, and that's another way of playing A major. Some of us are familiar with that as the E-shaped bar chord way of playing A major. But again, we've worked it out from first principles. Uh, let's look at one more. Supposing I come right up here um, and I want to make an A at this point of the fretboard. Um, well, uh, what have we got here? We've got a D. Uh, oh, there's a C sharp. Um, I think I'll keep that in there. Let's move across here. We've got an F sharp, that's no good. G, uh, G sharp, no good. A, we'll put that one in. C sharp, A. What we got there, that's a B, C, C sharp again there, we'll keep that one in. Here we've got an E, we'll keep that one in. There we've got a um, uh, an A flat or G sharp, A, we'll put that in as an A, and there we've got another C sharp. So if I put my bar across there, holding that one, that one and that one, and then I can make that shape there. That's another way of playing A major. And again, if you're used to using um, the more obscure bar chord shapes, you'll recognize that as a C shaped A major. So you can hear, there's our open A, our bar chord A, with the uh, E shape, and this more advanced bar chord really, with the C shape. Three different ways of playing A major. Let's leave the major triad for a moment and look at the minor triad. Now the formula for a minor triad is 1, flat 3, 5. Let's have a look at how we apply this in theory first um, by working out the notes of an E minor triad. And the first thing to notice is that although we're working out a minor chord, we apply the formula to the E major scale. key of E major has four sharps. Remember we're going to stop at note 7. Father Charles goes down, stopping at D, which is note 7 in the key of E. So that gives us our four sharps, F, C, G and D. We take the first, third and fifth notes to get the major triad. This gives us E, G sharp, B. But to change it to minor, we remember to flat the third. Now, the third at the moment is G sharp. To flat a note, 
means to move it one step down the chromatic scale. So what is one semitone lower than G sharp? The answer is G, G natural. Notice that we've used the natural sign to cancel out the G sharp in the key signature. So the E minor triad consists of E, G and B. Let's find these notes on the guitar in open position. So our E minor triad is E, G, B. Let's uh, again go for each of the six strings. We've got an E there, so that's good, that's in our triad. Then we've got A, which isn't, so take it up, A sharp, that isn't, B, that is. Remember we've got E, G and B. So we'll keep that note in, second fret. Then the next string, we've got D, that's no good, D sharp, no good, E, we'll keep that in. So we've got E, B and E. Next string is G. That's already okay. We've got G in our triad, so we'll leave that open. B, that's also okay. And E. So the only two notes we need to alter are the A string and the D string. And there's our familiar E minor chord. So that's how you'd work out an E minor chord using theory. However, we could have taken another route. To illustrate this, let's go back to our A major chord for a minute. Where's the third? In the key of A, A, B, C, must be the C sharp note. OK, to change from major to minor, we simply flat that note. So there's my A major, I've got the notes E, C sharp, A, and E, A, and E. So the third note in the key of A, A, B, C, is the C sharp, and there's only one of those in this chord, so it's nice and uh, easy to change. And remember that's the third note which we flatten or flat down to C natural by moving it from the second fret to the first fret and that's why that shape is an A minor because it's taken the third and flatted it and this applies no matter which voicing we use and remember we worked out that voicing of A major up there well that's an A, an E, an A, a C sharp uh, an E and an A. So again we've only one C sharp and it's there. Take that down to C natural and that's how we change from major to minor. So most of us know that that's a D major but what if we don't know or forgotten how to um, play a D minor? Well if you know your theory you can work it out. What we do, we look at this, we think we're in the key of D. What's the third note going to be? It's going to be D, E, F. Well, in this case, F sharp, because of course D's got two sharps in. Father Charles, to take us to note seven. So F sharp's our third. Now, which of these notes is an F sharp? Um, well, we've got E, A, D, A, D, F sharp, right up there. So we take that down a step, put the other two notes back, and there's our D minor chord. D major, take the third down, D minor. It's good this music theory, isn't it? Okay, let's talk about some other triads now. 